Good morning, church. Good morning. Today is July 18th, 2021, the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's gospel, people from towns all over Galilee hurried to see and hear Jesus. His heart was moved, for they appeared to be sheep without a shepherd. Jesus is that shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd. He has drawn us here today from different households, from different families, perhaps even from different towns. We come today to celebrate the Eucharist, this wonderful sacrament that Jesus established to be celebrated in his name until the end of time. This sacrament in which we receive our Lord, our Redeemer, our shepherd. Please be mindful to silence your phone so we don't disturb this mess. And please stand and let us greet our celebrant, Father Pierce. together one more time as the people of God at St. Helen wishes. Let us come together, bound together by our relationship with our God, with Jesus Christ, gathering for the worship that uh, sets us free and uh, increases the life that we need in order to live uh, more fully. And of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather, let us be conscious of our need for God's help, the need for ongoing healing. Let's raise our consciousness once more to the effects of our sins in our life. Consciousness of where it hurts for us today. 
where we stand in need of the healing that only our relationship with God can provide. The healing which has brought us thus far in our living, that healing that has come to us again and again uh, through the mercy of God, uh, that, that special kindness where we experience new life without having to pay for it or to deserve it. Let us raise consciousness to that need that we have that we bring together as we gather as a community. And let us ask God one more time for that mercy that makes us whole. giving us our sins, keep on bringing us to limitless, everlasting life.
our God who gathers with us whenever we gather. Great God, let the gift of your life continue to grow within us and among us, drawing us from death to faith, to hope, and to love. Great God, keep us alive in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Keep us watchful in our prayer. Keep us true to the teaching of Jesus. Do this for us till your glory, your glory, is revealed in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him the Lord, our justice, the word of the Lord.
and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading now from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory 
the apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and all they had taught. Jesus said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When Jesus disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. As I was looking at the readings for today's hour of worship, for today's Mass, I found that I was struck in a special way by the second reading, the, the reading from the epistle to the Ephesians. And as I was trying to let that passage work on me in a way of getting ready for my preaching in this hour of prayer. What occurred to me is rather than looking for a solution to the question that was rising up in my mind and in my heart, rather than looking for a solution, I thought it might be better at this moment to stay with the question, the question that arises for me out of that passage, talking about the life of that church with Paul and the people of Ephesus. It might be good for you to go back over the reading. I'm hearing it as a description of what happened among a group of people that gathered with one another around Paul and how they went through a transformation. a transformation that moved through the community and within each person of them in, in that community. How that transformation connected them more tightly and more fully with their relationship with the God of life and all things. question for me is what 
made that happen? How did it happen? What was the experience like? When I hear the reading, it's a report on what happened. But my sense of what life is like leads me to wonder and to ask, how did it come to be? It seems to have been fleeting. It was not permanent and certainly has not come down to our day. I was so struck that I read outside the passage that's in the lectionary for today and all through that chapter two where this reading comes from, it was, the, the story was the same how people were transformed at the very level of their being and their being in relationship with one another and with God. The focus is on a particular part of the situation. The gathering of the church, the assembly of God, at Ephesus was a gathering of people who were not supposed to come together, who were supposed to be at odds with one another. It was a gathering of people who were Israelites, Jews, and people who were Gentiles, folks who were not Jews, who had a different relationship with whatever God that they might be dealing with. And when they came in contact with a living gospel, they came together in one place, in one mind, reconciled not only to one another as Jews and Gentiles, but also with God a Trinitarian situation which fascinates me. And I wonder how did they do it? Even if it was only once, how did this happen? Paul says something which he says in so many other places that this occurred at this time, a couple of thousand years ago, that, that, that this occurred in Christ. Again and again when he's writing to folks, he talks about what happens when folks are in Christ. And I wonder, what is that like? In Christ. In the Messiah in the anointed one. What is it about the anointing? What is it about people and the one who has been sent that can bring about what happened in Ephesus? I'm feeling the need to linger and to tarry with the question before I reach out and to try to lay hold of and implement some sort of solution. I've been told by teachers that I admire that I have good questions. And so maybe a question might be good for you, my brothers and sisters, because the, the questioning has been valuable in terms of the answer, the solution that the question gathers, the focus that it achieves. So I'm gonna try to stay with that 
and to see if I can share with you, my brothers and sisters, that kind of a question. How did it happen for those brothers and sisters who came as they were? How did it happen among them that they achieved this transformation that Paul is so proud of? As the question forms in my mind and in my heart, it's a question that you and I, we need today in the United States on this day and in this hour. The question of how we can come together in fullness of life, a fullness of life that we can only have together. We have our own Jew and Gentile situation, as I see it, in this continuing Trump land that I'm living in. The followers of Trump, the, fo the folks who are even pretending to follow Trump, on the one hand, millions of people, and on the other hand, those who don't follow Trump, who remember and are still in contact with something better. How, what would need to happen for us to to come together in the United States the way they did at Ephesus when the heart of living was what was at stake. Felt not just intellectually, but at the deepest and most profound level. Christ is still with us. So the stage is there for it to happen again. For the two to come together, as Paul says, in a peace. A peace that is not just the absence of conflict, war, but where hearts remain different, but united, accepting, forgiving, whatever it takes to be together in relationship with one another and with the one God of Jesus Christ. How did it happen? What did it take? Is that a question that I can share with you? Is there a similar thirst? I wonder what it was. Just, I have trouble imagining what it was that came into Ephesus. This place somewhere, it seems like it's in what's now Western Turkey. How those folks could even be attracted. What made them listen to the message that Paul or whoever it was who started that church, what, what just got their interest? What happened that made them follow through? So that a guy as crazy
critical as Paul is, could just draw out this situation of victory. Victory on the move toward fuller life. Maybe if that question is strong enough and vital enough, it can quicken my mind, quicken our hearts, so that we can make further progress. Transcending perhaps this sort of victory that we have today, we did somehow miraculously achieve a new president in the face of resistance. But something more than that has happened at Ephesus. And that seems to me to be a promise for me and for you that it can be that way with us. It wasn't the, the final stopping point for Ephesus. Things got worse and that's, you know, we have the world that results from that. But perhaps with a vital question, lightning can strike again in our day and in our hearts. Maybe the saying of scripture is true. Jesus said, uh, ask and you will receive. If you're able to ask, that's the door to receive. Knock and things open up. Can you and I, can we maintain that ability to so that that door will open for us and experience that a similar transformation, real world transformation. The Jews and Gentiles so different from one another, different gods, different values ways of proceeding. All sons and daughters of God somehow staying with one another with visitors from outside the community together they were able to achieve something miraculous, something that can be a beacon for somebody like me and you. Somewhere I believe that that's the reason why we gather, why we have been gathering, why we gather for Eucharist. Not just an hour of prayer for us. Not something that we attend and that we watch. But when we gather for Eucharist, we gather to do something, to make something happen. To put in place something that was not there until we do it that offering that we make. After hearing 
the history of Jesus and the people of God, that offering that we make with the same spirit that Jesus had. sacrifices I want mercy it seems to me when we come together for this kind of worship we maintain the sacrifice but the attitude that we take of becoming more and more the promise that we make to our God that we will become more and more like our God that's the mercy that heals and allows us to live against all resistance. Let us rise, sisters and brothers. Let us use the creed to express what we cherish in our faith relationship with our God. I believe in one God, the Father of Christ, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God. continue to pray in conversation with our God who gathers with us, asking for God's help for us and for all with whom we are related. O 
God's holy church, that we may be shepherded by wise and righteous leaders who will do what is just and right, bringing us ever closer to the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, God, For the leaders around the world, that they may rule and govern wisely, bringing peace, justice, and mercy to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who feel lost or adrift, searching for meaning in their lives, that they may find in the kindness and compassion of others a glimpse of the shepherd's loving care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That we may uphold the dignity of human life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who search for God has brought them, has brought them to this flock, that they may find the risen Lord in our midst through our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are suffering or are sick on account of COVID-19, that the message of God's love may bring them comfort in their distress. And inspire others to provide care and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all of our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, we pray for the good and health of Patricia Clemens, Larry Bennett, Yvonne Anderson, Leroy Young, Barbara Finch, Barbara Green, Kevin Kingery, and Lamar Sellers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Gracious God, thank you for enabling us to depend upon you one more time as we gather together. But please hear us as we pray from our hearts. Enable us also to receive ever more readily the answers, the help that you give us whenever we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.
But sisters and brothers, the altar is ready. Our table is set. We need to pray now that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our almighty creator. Amen. Gracious God, please bring us closer to salvation and healing. Bring us closer through these gifts which we bring in your honor. Accept the perfect sacrifice that you have given to us. Bless this sacrifice as you blessed the gifts of Abel. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to our God. All powerful, ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Jesus' cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and, and keeps calling us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works because you have called us out of darkness and into your own wonderful light. And so with the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory now, and we join in their unending hymn of praise. so that from east to west a, a complete offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, gracious God, we bring you these gifts today. We ask you to please make them holy by the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose word we gather to celebrate this Eucharist. And now we tell that old, old story because it has fresh power. The story of Jesus on the night he was betrayed. The story of how Jesus took bread and how gracious God, how he gave you thanks and praise. How he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, Jesus took the cup 
And once again, great God, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples. And he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant that will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. And then he said, do this in memory of me. into heaven and feeling ready to greet him when he comes again we offer you in thanks this holy and living sacrifice please look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood that we might be filled with his holy spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Indeed, may he make us an everlasting gift to you. May he enable us to share in the inheritance of your holy ones with Mary, the virgin mother of God, with the apostles, with the martyrs, and all our holy ancestors on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Gracious God, May this sacrifice that we offer, which has made our peace with you, may it advance the peace and salvation of all the people in this world. Please strengthen in faith your pilgrim church on earth. Strengthen your servant, Pope Francis. Strengthen our Bishop Timothy and all the bishops. Strengthen the clergy and the entire people that your son has gained for you. Great God, please hear the family. He, please hear the prayers of this family that you've gathered here before you. In mercy and in love, unite all of your people wherever they may be. And please welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and anyone else who has left this world in your friendship. Our hope is to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit,
my sisters and my brothers, let us continue to pray the way Jesus taught us. said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give to you. But Lord, don't look on our sins then right now, but see the faith of your church and grant to us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us show a sign of peace to one another. Sisters and brothers, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold who you are. Become whom you receive. Congratulations to us who are called to his supper. Lord.
Sisters and brothers, let us continue to pray. Merciful God, may these mysteries give us new purpose and bring us to a new life in you. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The body church. Yes, yeah, that's why we come here every Sunday. Because we know who our God is. Our God is a loving God. That gives us the grace to be able to love each other. Our God is a peaceful God. So sisters and brothers, join me in thanking the choir for that it's a beautiful one. It touched me. When I walked into the church from the back, I saw one white guy. And I look at the shape of the head. And then the shoulders and so on and so forth. I said, I think that looks like Father Cassidy. But I wasn't quite sure. And to make things more complex, he was wearing a mask. But I am glad to welcome Father Matt Cassidy. For those of you who do not know him, he served in this parish, and indeed he was very popular. Very, very popular in every way. His interactions, his preaching, believe it or not, for a white guy. In the black church. So we are indeed very, very happy to have you. I hope you are not leaving us very soon. By the way, he's in South, is that Southeast Asia? I'm in Micronesia. I decided to teach at Jesuit High School called Xavier High School. I achieved Micronesia. Okay, okay. You're welcome. But are you going to be spending some more time with us? Particularly those who have not been vaccinated, because I understand that 99% of those who presently 
get the Delta variant are those who have not been vaccinated. So please use your wisdom and use your judgment in terms of our interaction here in the church. We want to make this environment a healthy environment for all. So when you feel that you're not comfortable and you want to be with us, please do so. And if you have not been vaccinated, we we'll ask for the sake of charity. Because it says, you know, for the sake of charity, do to others as we want them to do to you. So please also wear the mask. They always say that charity begins at home. And I think one of the, the, the gospel principles is that love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. I don't think any of us want to get the COVID. So if you don't want to get the COVID, please don't be an agent that gives COVID to other people. So please let's keep that in mind. And spread the news. Tell others who are not here today that we need to be careful. But that they have to come back to church. That should not dissuade us from coming to church. We we'll still keep we can still keep our social distancing and we are mask. Okay? Anyone visiting us for the first time today beside Father Cassidy? <laughs> yes, sir. Could you tell us who you are? Yes, sir. First of all, this is my wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. well, Accompany her again. Sisters and brothers, please rise. We're about to go forth to live the sacrifice that we have offered to live the life. For that, I say to you, the Lord be with you. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come among us and stay with us forever. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen.